Welcome to my channel Inside Dentistry, a YouTube dental school. Please subscribe my channel for more videos and please press the like button. This will motivate me to make more videos. Myself, Dr. Siddharth Roy, and today I'm going to talk about necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis. So let's begin. Necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis. Necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis is an extension of necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. And gingivitis usually will show swelling or ulceration of the gingiva and when this gingivitis progress into periodontitis causing necrosis and ulceration of the periodontium as well as gingiva it will lead to necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis and that will lead to attachment loss means the gum will be detached from the tooth surface and there will be severe bone loss causing exfoliation of the teeth so to know more about the things you must watch the full video so let's see what are the other things such as clinical symptoms, uh, diagnosis and treatment for the same. So before going to the clinical features, I want to discuss about the history of uh, necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis uh, for a few moments. So in 1986, people used to think that gingivitis and periodontitis are kind of same entity. They can't be differentiated. So they thought that uh, the periodontitis usually occurred due to gingivitis and they are the same entity, they came from the same entity. However, it is not fully understood that whether they are same or different, but they have tried to categorize it under the same category and they named it necrotizing ulcerative gingiva periodontitis. But in 1989, World Warshop named it as necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis in thinking that the two entities are different because the periodontitis are showing attachment loss and bone loss and gingivitis are not showing attachment loss and bone loss. So that was the only difference, only distinguishing factors which, can dif which was differentiating the periodontitis and gingivitis. And in 1999, uh, NUP was found in HIV patients. They discovered that uh, NUP necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis was occurring in patients with HIV. Now let's see about the clinical features of the necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis. NUP is characterized by necrosis and ulceration of the coronal portion of the interdental papillae and gingival margin. So from this picture you can see that these are the small interdental papillae and gingival margin. These are undergoing necrosis and ulceration. Also the characteristic feature as we mentioned earlier that there is severe attachment loss and bone loss. It is there. And there is deep intraosseous craters. From this picture you can see that there is bone loss and there is formation of deep intraosseous crater. They are like deep crater like uh, structures which are forming in uh, necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis. Also from these small diagrams you can observe that there is necrosis of the gingival margin, necrosis and ulceration of the interdental papillae as well as there is uh, erythema of the gingival margin, gingival margin is red and painful. So these are the main clinical features of as well as attachment loss and bone loss. So this is the clinical pictures of the necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis. From this picture you can note the crater, crater which is occurring in NUP due to attachment loss and bone loss, which is the characteristic feature. You can see there is erythema and necrosis and ulceration of gingival margin and there is uh, necrosis of the interdental papillae, there is formation of craters. So these are the, from this clinical picture you can easily understand uh, what are the main features of the disease. A main feature of necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis is the pockets are not found. See, for example, this is the gingiva and this is the tooth surface. This is the cementum. So usually we probe and we see what is the pocket depth and recession. But a striking feature of necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis is no pocket is found. Why is it happening? So let's see in details why it's happening. Usually 
it's because of necrosis of the junctional epithelium this is the junctional epithelium and this is the marginal epithelium so this is the junctional epithelium which is undergo necrosis and due to the fact that it under, undergo necrosis also the marginal epithelium connective tissue undergo necrosis and ulceration it results in gingival recession in such a way that the pockets are not formed in fact for a pocket to form the junctional epithelium must move apically to form a pocket but if there is ulceration of the junctional epithelium how can it form the pocket just imagine it will prevent apical movement of the junctional epithelium and the pockets won't be formed so this is the reason why in nup you get no pockets so from this picture you can see the child is suffering from tooth loss and yeah and there is greater like bone loss also in this picture and which is the one of the major feature of nup bone loss and tooth loss they are kind of related isn't it seems like they are engaged with each other whenever there is bone loss there is tooth loss why does it happen let's see from this picture you can see this is the two teeth and this is the small alveolar bone present i'll use some highlighters to get you know this is the small alveolar bone processes present between the teeth and after few days a small alveolar bone supporting this tooth are lost in patients with hiv due to severe inflammation periodontitis and gingivitis so a lot of structure has been lost which is a sad part so as the bone is the major structure which is holding the tooth in its socket when it is lost of course the tooth will take his chance to say bye bye i don't need you any more bone <laughs> so this is how tooth loss occurs other symptoms of necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis is there is fever malaise malodor lymphadenopathy all of these things are kind of related to presence due to presence of bacterial colonies viruses all of these things shows that there is an etiology behind the factor we'll get to know about it in the few next slides microscopic findings there are several microscopic findings in a plaque in nup nup is characterized by formation of plaque of course that is the major etiology and plaque formation will usually show different types of microscopic findings the first one is mixed microflora a microbial flora such as bacteria spirochetes etc that is the first one the second one will be a surface aggregation of spirochetes like on the plaque surface there will be only one layer of spirochetes okay that is the surface aggregation which is present on the surface and neutrophil zone the third zone will be neutrophilic zone this is the neutrophilic zone it's called neutrophilic zone because it contains pmnl cells and below it will be necrotic zone necrotic zone will contain necrotic cells necrotic product and etc so from this image and ima this image you can easily understand the various zones and microscopic findings seen in necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis hiv patients with necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis or nup will show characteristic oral lesions or characteristic clinical features such as linear gingival erythema from this picture you can see there is a red colored gingival margin this is actually the linear gingival erythema and also hi patient will show nug and nup 
Other features of periodontitis in HIV patient is attachment loss and bone loss which is extremely rapid and necrosis and exposure of bone and sequestration of bone fragments also occurs. NUP in HIV is also called necrotizing ulcerative stomatitis. So this NUP in HIV patient it's also called necrotizing ulcerative stomatitis and CD4 count is usually below 200 cells per mm cube. The CD4 count is usually more in HIV patient but in patients with both HIV and NUP the CD4 counts decreases more and it becomes less than 200 cells per mm cube. That is a striking feature. So from this picture you can see that there is exposure of bone, excessive calliculus formation, necrosis, an ulceration, and erythema of the gingiva and periodontium, and causing an abnormal looking structure, which is a major diagnostic uh, picture of NUP. Now let's study about the etiology of NUP. What can be the major reasons or causes of the disease. First one is fusiform spirochete, a bacterial flora. It is the one of the major cause. Second is malnutrition. As you can see, a child showing malnutrition, poor oral hygiene, smoking, pre-existing periodontal disease, viral infection, immunocompromised status, psychological stress. All of these factors play an important role in uh, formation of NUP. Pictures of uh, the virus, bacteria and smoking were the major etiology of the disease. So let's see uh, what are the major bacterias uh, which are involved in formation of the disease. Major is Agribacter actinomycemocomitans. Second one is Prevotella intermediata. Third one is Porphyromonas gingivalis. Fourth one is Fusobacterium nucleatum. Fifth one is Campylobacter species. So all of these bacteria are forming a microbial colony or bacterial colony where they are thriving and forming the disease, forming plaque aggregation and causing periodontitis. Spirochetes, herpes and candida. They also play an important role in NUP. So this is a picture of spirochete, herpes and candida albicans. Let's see how they are causing the disease. For example, we have never seen any gingivitis or periodontitis caused by a yeast. But yeah, it's true. Candida albicans does cause formation of NUP. And it's one of the major cause. Isn't it striking? Of course. Let's see why. So, Candida albicans cause production of eicosanoids, which leads to release of pro-inflammatory mediators and which facilitates spirochete colonization and invasion in the gums, causing NUP. So, this is the spirochete and herpes. They also cause modulation of host response and adaptive immunity. So they alter the host response and they decrease the host response. And due to that what happens, the local immune system, they stop working. And what happens in that? They get an opportunity to invade the bone and periodontium causing NUP, necrosis, an ulceration of the periodontium. That is how it mainly occurs. And candida albicans, it provides an opportunity for this bacteria to colonize the gingiva more. That's how it occurs. It does not usually occurs only due to candida albicans. It occurs because of both of the things, both of the organisms, both of the microorganisms. Now let's discuss about the treatment factors of NUP. There are several ways to uh, treat the disease and there are several methods to actually counter strike the same. So 
द फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट इज टू मेंटेन अ प्रॉपर ओरल हाइजीन मेथड मेंटेनिंग अ प्रॉपर हाइजीन कैन ट्राई to in some extent to cure the disease but it will not remove the etiology which is the bacterial colonies candida herpes etc which needs a scaling and root planning and development of that area by a professional clinician such as dentist so the patient must go to a dental clinic and get uh, his scaling done however in immunocompromised patients he or she must consult the physician to rule out any kind of blood disease such as leukemia or any kind of medication or any kind of disease which is causing immunosuppression or compromises so when this immunosuppression compromises is improved the opportunistic viruses bacteria and fungi will be ruled out and also in patients who are not immunocompromised can be held with antibiotics analgesics and anti plaque agents such as chlorhexidine for in patients who are showing symptoms of candida they must take antifungals and for the patient who has fever must take antiviral drugs thank you thank you subscribe my channel for more videos press the like button if you love my video please comment down below and please let me know what and all videos you need i will surely make it for you thank you everyone